Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Des and you're watching Des the Fashion Eater and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the toxic products in your products, the toxic ingredients in your products, yes. So I just want to start off by saying I am not a scientist but I am an interested consumer and I deserve the right to do my research. I'm very interested in beauty so that means I'm very interested in what's included in my beauty and this year and last year I've been really interested in conscious fashion and fair trade beauty just everything so I'm like hmm let me just make a video on it so let's just get started and first I just want to start off telling you the definition of carcinogen which I just want to say a lot of these ingredients are pronounced all types of ways so if I mess it up at least I have it on the screen for you with the correct spelling so carcinogen basically is a substance capable of causing cancer in the living tissue and a lot of these ingredients are within our beauty products and I know I'm not trying to come off preachy or anything but it's really crazy how majority of the products that I love and that are in my cabinet include a lot of these ingredients and if they're in my cabinet I'm pretty sure they're in your cabinet and let's just talk about the whole banning of what ingredients are allowed in certain products so fun fact fun fact in the US, there are only 30 ingredients that are banned in personal products. Okay, so let me know if you think 30 is a lot, 30 is too little, let me know. In Canada, if you're watching this video and you're from Canada, 600 is that number, 600 ingredients have been banned. So US 30, Canada 600, and Europe, take a wild guess, is it, you know, add 30 and 60, 630? No, it is 1,400 ingredients have been banned in Europe to put in their products. So I just wonder, hmm, how many bad ingredients, how many toxic ingredients are actually in the products that we use in the US and we're just rubbing it all over our face? And I'm not saying that overnight I'm gonna have all the best products in the world, but I just wanna start off by informing myself so that I know exactly what products to look for and I'm getting into skincare because you know a girl's getting older and I just feel like if I'm gonna sleep in this product I want to make sure that the ingredients are healthy ingredients like foundation I don't wear foundation every day but if you are wearing foundation every day then you know you should probably look into making sure that the ingredients aren't melting your skin off or cancers or anything like that the reason for this i'm pulling all this information everything is going to be linked below fun articles for you to read but it allows for the products to be cheaper for us and for the companies to make more money so that is why these ingredients are being used so let me just go over these ingredients really fast and the problems and why they're in the products just as much information i can get out there and make this video as short as possible let's jump into these 23 ingredients so the first ingredient is bha butylated hydroxonisol do you see under do you understand how a lot of these products are just so hard to pronounce so i'm just going to call it bha and this is linked to cancer skin irritation and hormone disruption it's just like uh, it just blows my mind the next one is BHT which is also linked to skin irritation and a reason why these ingredients are in your products is because it produces elastic consistency and it maintains the color and the appearance of the formula over time so that's why it has it in there but the negative thing about this here we go is that long-term exposure to this with high doses can be toxic and they're still evaluating possible human carcinogens. Do you see why I gave you the de definition in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Mostly found in eyeshadows, lipsticks, and blushes, and more. A lot of these things, it'll list, it'll tell me what the most popular, like popular item that it's found in, but a lot of them say and more. So let's jump into number three, chemical sunscreens so it's linked to hormone disruptions which a lot which a lot of these things on this list are and it says you can opt for safer ones like afobenzone but it still remains on studies so yeah i don't know every time someone says like it remains on studied it just reminds me of when people used to smoke cigarettes back in the day and they didn't know it was bad for them 
Yeah. And then it said you can also opt for sunscreens with zinc oxide or titanium oxide. And the highest risk chemical found in sunscreen that's really bad for you is oxybenzone because it acts as an estrogen in the body and alters sperm production in animals. And I'm an animal, you're an animal, so think about that. Um, it's also associated with endometriosis in women. Moving down to number four, there is EDTA, which causes problems not for consumers directly, but for aquatic life because the substance doesn't break down and it can get caught up in the environment, which is not great, and it's found in the waterways. So if it can't break down and it's going to affect the aquatic life, everything's full circle, people. Everything is full circle. The fifth one is hard to pronounce, but I'm going to say it how I'm going to say it. Ethanolamines, ethanolamines, how would you say it? Mines or mines? Anyways, it contains chemicals like natural mines, which are linked to cancer. This is the fifth thing on the list, and we're talking about cancer how many times? Like, why are these ingredients in our products? I don't really know. Number six is ethoxylated ingredient so it is also a known carcinogen which is you know linked to cancer and it says to avoid these products and all these compounds i'm going to list them all on the screen because sometimes it won't have the ingredient listed on the product but it'll have the basically the synonym to that or a micro version of that seven for meldehyde i have noticed this a lot in nail polishes and I don't do gel, I don't really do, um, what's the other one, SNS, but I have seen on my Instagram that there are nail polish brands that don't have formaldehyde, so I do want to create another video about that, but it is known as a human carcinogen, and it's also harmful to the immune system. It affects you because you can have side effects like skin irritation, burning scalp, hair loss, irritation in the eyes, nose, and throat. And let me just throw that out there. I had rhinopharyngitis like a month ago. And ever since I had that, I've had a cough at night and I don't find it healthy. So I'm like, I do have a skincare, like a nighttime skincare routine. So I just need to dive into what products I'm putting around my nose and my mouth so that I'm not coughing my lungs out at the end of the night. Number eight, fragrance. So basically the federal law doesn't require these companies to tell you exactly what is in fragrance. And a lot of my products, it'll have the ingredients, but then there's fragrance. So fragrance is like their secret formula. So they can put anything in fragrance without actually telling you. So my suggestion is really just to try and buy fragrance free whenever you can. But fragrance is the loophole so that they don't have to tell us what's exactly in that product. Here are some toxic ingredients and I'm just going to label it fragrance. Fragrance can contain hormone disruptors and are among the top five allergens in the world. You see, this is why I want to get into just better beauty. Number nine, hydroquinone is used for skin lightening mostly and can cause discoloration in the skin and it is also known as a carcinogen. Mm -mm -mm. Then we have number 10, methyl cellosol or 2-methoxyethanol. Methoxyethanol. Anyways, it is banned in Europe and it causes skin irritation and may cause effects on the central nervous system, blood, bone marrow, kidneys, and your liver. All that. How does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? Moving on to number 11. Let me know if you are even able to pronounce this one here, but it is also banned in Europe and it's not allowed to be used in your leave-in products there and it is toxic to the nervous system. I mean, <sighs> how is Bella talking about this? I don't know, it just blows my mind. Number 12, nanoparticles. So basically nanoparticles are ultra fine particles. So these are gonna seep right up into your skin and may cross over into your membranes, you know, like your brain and other organs. So that's why it's not healthy for you. And um, nanoparticles 
it says here is understudied. So how much do we really know about them? Number 13, which I've seen everywhere, and a lot of companies are saying that they're paraben free, but just make sure because there is the term greenwashing. So a company will say that they're good in all these other areas, but if you dive super deep, they're really not. They're just trying to market themselves as such, but they're really not. So parabens are linked to hormone disruption and increase of breast cancer. leading to conditions like adult onset acne, which I definitely don't want because I'm an adult, and issues with menstruation and mood and serious cancers. And mostly this is found in makeup, body washes, deodorant, shampoos, facial cleansers, food, and pharmaceutical products. Moving on to number 14, Petrol... <laughs> it just sounds like a Marvel name, like Petro. Okay, number 14, Petrolatum and Paraffin linked to cancer, produced in oil refineries, and at the same time as automobile fuel, heating oil, and chemical feed stocks. Number 15, phthalates, okay? Most typically remained unlisted and hidden on your products, not so good, and it is linked to hormone disruption. See, I already have enough like disruption going on on my own. I don't really need, I don't need assistance from my products. Um, this is also linked to increased breast cancer, early breast development in girls, and reproductive birth defects in male and females found in hairsprays, perfumes, moisturizers, and deodorants. Number 16, pegs. Tiny plastic beads in face scrubs and lip scrubs. These are frequently contaminated with 1,4-dioxane, which in the U.S. government consider considered a probable human carcinogen. Be careful. I have heard people say like those scrubs with like little beads are not really good for you and that you should not use it on broken skin as well. Um, yes, another fact that I have highlighted here is that it doesn't break down into the sewage systems and fish can consume them and other marine life. So <sighs> it's crazy how these toxic products are not only bad for us, but bad for the animals out there. I actually cannot. So number 17, propylene glycol. It's classified as a skin irritant and penetrator causing dermatitis as well as hives in humans. Number 18, this one is usually found in hair dyes and linked to allergies, irritation, and hormone disruption. I should put a counter in the corner for how many times I say hormone disruption for the rest of this video. Number 19, this is toxic to the immune system and can cause birth defects. <sighs> number 20, number 20. So these are antibacterials and preservatives used in personal care and home care products. They're persistent in the environment and may be associated with hormone disruptions and it can contribute to making bacteria antibiotic resistant and I did also read information that there is no evidence that triclosan can provide any more benefit of washing with it versus regular soap that doesn't have triclosan in it. 21, retinol, which I have been seeing everywhere in like the beauty blogs, like the beauty websites everywhere that I read every single day. And um, so basically I have read that if you are gonna use these products and it says it's mostly found in anti-aging products and night creams. So if you're gonna use this product, just make sure that you're not using it in daytime, only use it at nighttime when the bottle says to use it because these types of ingredients when exposed to sunlight actually acts as a carcinogen and can become cancerous. So if you're using this night cream at night with retinol, just make sure you're only using it at night because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using some anti-aging products that have them. So I just want to let you know as well not to use them in sunlight, only to use them at night. And it also says to avoid sunscreens containing retinol derived ingredients because it can have the opposite effect. Number 23, we're almost there, synthetic colors. So just look at the back of your ingredients and see if it says FDNC or DNC, let's see what all of these mean. So F represents food, DNC represents drug and cosmetics, and it is suspected to be a human carcinogen and linked to skin irritation, 
and ADHD in children and the European Union has banned it. Are we all moving to Europe or are we all moving to Europe? Yes, let me know in the comments below. Number 23, sodium lauryl sulfate, also known as SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate, known as SLES. So this is known to be an irritant in the skin, the lungs, and the eyes, combined with other chemicals can form nitrosamines, which we talked about earlier in the list, which equals a carcinogen, and this leads to issues in the kidney. So this can lead to issues like kidney and respiratory damage. It's just stuff that I'm not trying to touch. Let me tell you, respiratory a respiratory infection, I have had one for the first time a month ago, like I said earlier in the video, and I would not wish that on my worst enemy. It is literally so painful and you have no control over your body. You just have to like take it and just let it all out. But I'm just going to end the video here. Tune in for my next video because I want to talk about the difference between natural beauty, vegan beauty, fair trade beauty, clean beauty, organic beauty. Did I say organic already? Um, because there are differences between that and I didn't even know there was a difference between that but we can learn together and I'm gonna link some really great articles in the description below and let's just join this journey together I'm not perfect and I don't claim to be perfect but I want to be aware of what I'm putting on my body I mean you know my body is the biggest organ there is so why not learn what I'm putting on it so you're going to see more on my channel of me doing beauty reviews on clean beauty and beauty that is healthier to put on your skin. I don't know about you, but I take my face very seriously. Do you take your face seriously? Let me know what you take seriously in the comments below and I will see you in my next video, darling. Bye.